the book of Revelation, John saw one riding forth on a white horse with fire in his eyes, many crowns on his head, and his name is called the Word of God. And he's also King of kings and Lord of lords. How many want to ride with him? The armies of heaven followed after him, it says. He's got fire in his eyes, a sword in his hand. He's riding a white horse all across this land. Fire in his eyes and a sword in his hand. He's riding a white horse all across this land. And he's calling out to you and me. Will you?
come in to his presence. We are all the same at the cross, amen? speaker this morning that I met back in the 90s. I went over to Revival at the Shady Brook Assembly of God and met him there and he was from Glenville at the time, originally from the islands and then now he lives in Montgomery, Alabama. But our friend just this January, his precious wife, Linda, went to be with the Lord. And so he's walking through. Come up here, Brother Gray. Can you come on up here? I just want to show you something here. How many recently in the last two years has lost a spouse? Would you, would you just raise your hands? Uh, I just wanted Brother Greg to see that we're all doing just this last week. Brother Jim Lee, we had a wonderful service in Jim Lee's home before he went to be with the Lord. So, Brother, you're ministering to a lot of brokenhearted people that are walking right where you are. This sister here just this week, her husband went to be with the Lord, and there's so many. But how many know, uh, one of the things Brother Seeley called me is immediately in January after she'd passed, and he said, she heard singing. And they're like, well, nobody's singing. There's no music. She said, oh, yes, I'm hearing you are my hiding place. I mean, no, that's the way to go. When you know the presence of the Lord and the angels of the Lord and camp round about them that fear him, brother, God bless you. It's a blessing to be here. As Pastor said, I'm missing a... Let me put it this way. I'm missing my better three quarters. <laughs> Not my better half. That lady was everything to me. 
everything. And um, I, this is not the Linda Seeley show, but I know that you wouldn't mind if I take two or three minutes to say a few things. As I sat there, I miss her saying, Jesus! Yes. Yeah, but let me, let me um, pick up where Pastor left off. As you know, we were here in October. We were on one of these trips. And Linda was, to me, healthy. And then we went back home. We got home the 6th of, where well, we ministered in Athens, Tennessee, the 6th of November. And then we went home and then we ministered 40 miles north of Montgomery on the 13th of November. And it was that night that she said to, to us there, um, she was only going to eat a few chips because they had a meal after the service. And that was the last service that Linda was in, November 13th. Um, we, we, she dressed one Sunday after that to go to church and then she wasn't up to it. Anyhow, on the night of, no, of December 13th, and I, I, in the winter, I love Linda more than in the summer. <laughs> and by that I mean Linda, Linda had some heat in her. <laughs> so in the winter I'll put my back next to hers and, and cuddle up and she'd be saying, she called me yo, why yo? She's saying yo, go over, you know, um, I can't turn over and I, I don't want to hit you in, 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 in your face in the middle of the night with my elbow. So, <laughs> So just go over, and I'm just there crouching up under her. So this night, I, I got next to her, and I said, yo, yo, you're, you're extra hot. And, and she said, check my, temperature. not temperature, but my oxygen. Because since COVID, our, our daughter being a nurse, she, she bought every little thing for us. Bought me something to breathe in. They bought one of those little things to check your oxygen and everything. So she told me to check her oxygen. And when I checked it, it was 78. And I said, I said, yo, I'm going to call Lady. Like, we call our daughter so many different things. I said, yo, I'm going to call Lady. She said, no, don't, 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 don't bother. Let her sleep. See? She was so concerned about people. Let, let her sleep and then we'll call her in the morning if it doesn't come back up. Check it in the morning. It was still down below 80. And I called, I called our daughter and she said, take her to the emergency right now. So we, we got dressed and Linda drove to the emergency. I, I rode along with her. So we got there, and when we got there and she went in, the security guard said, ma'am, you don't look good. And she said, and I don't feel good either. And I, I went to the emergency with the intention, or not intention, with the expectation that it's going to take a few hours before they get to us. Before Linda filled out the first four or five questions, they call her, and that was surprising to me. They call her and she went in the back and the doctor checked her out and whatnot. And he, he, he said to her that she has some, something wrong with her lungs, some sort of old scars. I, Linda said, what, right? You know, I never, no one ever told me anything was wrong with my lungs. Anyhow, so I asked him, I said, sir, will she be going home tonight? He said, oh no. 
Oh, and, and that, when he said that she wouldn't be going home tonight, I started feeling down. And, and he said, and then he went to tell me in the back and he came back and he told, he told us, I'm going to talk with the team here and if, if we can't handle it, we are going to send her, we are going to find a hospital in the area that could, they sent Linda 171 miles from Montgomery, three hours down to Mobile. I'm, I'm going to cut out some. So it so happened that that night was real bad weather and, and the ambulance, they didn't want to send the ambulance not till around midnight when the weather subsided. And, and our daughter came down then from Tuscaloosa, which, where she lived two hours from us. And we followed the ambulance. Well, not we followed, we went down there and we got down there after three in the morning. And Linda was in the hospital, I'm cutting her a lot. Linda was in the hospital for two weeks. They checked her lungs and there was nothing and uh, no cancer and they, they, I hate to say this, but they bore a hole through her side. <laughs> and check her and they said that she had some sort of cancer. And after two weeks, the one thing with Linda is she could handle bad news. She was as cheerful as ever. Every morning when they come in, doctors were saying, and she saw maybe six or seven different doctors that came into the room. And they were saying, you, you're so cheerful, like, you know, and, and Linda was just saying, tell, tell me, we'll deal with it. Anyhow, so they, they released her, um, and she came to our house and spent two days, and then our daughter said, I'm going to take you up to my place so I can see to you. I can better see to you up at my place, you know, where I am. So we went up there on, on the 30th of no, uh, December. And then on the morning of the 6th of January, and, and by my daughter, and I think they ha my daughter has this big California king for what, I don't know. But she's just there by herself. <laughs> and, and so she and Linda shared the, the, the I allowed Linda and her to share that room and, and I was, in the, in the elsewhere. So about 20 to four, I, I, I woke and I heard Linda. So I went in there and she was on the side of the bed sitting and, and she said, yo, come and rub my back. And I went in there and I rubbed her back. And while I was rubbing her back, she said, man, that feels so good. And her back, I shouldn't even say this, but her back was as smooth as a counter top. And I'm rubbing her back, she says, that feels so good. And then she said to me, as Pastor touch on, do you hear that song? I said, no, oh, I, don't, I don't hear any song. And she said, do you, do, you, do you hear that song? And then our daughter woke up and I, I asked her, I said, is there any music on? She said, no, the, the phone is on the charger. And Linda insisted that she heard the song. So I said to her, what song do you hear? She said, you are my hiding place. This morning, I, when I, before I came over here from the house, I wrote it down. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. God, mercy. I will trust in you. Let the weak say I'm strong in the strength of the Lord. That's the song she said she heard. And I sat there with her 
and our daughter went back to sleep. And we were just there sitting and talking. And I think it's then I said, I said, yo, I love you. She said, I told you 30 plus years ago that I love you. And nothing has changed that. So then she, want, she was feeling tired and she wanted to lay down. But she said, I can only lay on one side because of that, the tubing. And, and so I tell her, well, lay in, and I, I went back out. Then our daughter got up and went to Walmart, like most young people. They don't want to deal with. My, my daughter would be telling me things like, I've exhausted my social connection for the day. So she got up like five to six. She took off and went to Walmart. So that when Walmart, when the neighborhood Walmart opened at six o'clock, she'd be one of the first people in and one of the first people out. So she, she did that. And then she came back and she brought some, some um, tea bags. Because Linda, drank tea three, four times a day. So she said, yo, make me a cup of tea. And I made her a cup of tea. She was feeling weak and I used a spoon and I was feeding her. She looked at me and she said, how much honey you put in that? And I had put a spoonful and then I poured some more in there. <laughs> and she said, she said to me, I told her, and she said, yeah, because it tastes real, it tastes too sweet. So I, I finished, and then she said, I, no, I don't want any more, and I drank the rest. And, and um, then she went back to sleep again. But before our daughter got back, I, I, I forgot that, before our daughter got back, she said, Lay your hand on my chest and pray for me. And I laid my hand on her chest and, and I prayed with her and she started to pray and worship God and pray in the spirit and, and rejoice. And, and I, I didn't know that was going to be the last time I prayed with her. And so our daughter, you know, after she came back and I fed her the tea and I went out and left the totem in the room and, and then... Linda went back off to sleep again and our daughter eased out and we the two of us were there sitting down talking. Now it's like it's like ten o'clock and we we out there talking and our daughter heard her so she went in there with her uh, or to her and not too long after she went in there back in the room I heard her say Jesus Call 911. And I grabbed my phone and I called 911. And she told me, bring me the phone. And I took the phone. I went in and she was working on Linda. And then she, and the, whatever, the operator, I would say. It's not an operator. You all, the, the person at 911. And they, they were talking their medical thing and then the, the paramedic scheme and and um and I'm there on the I'm there on the coach sitting down. And I honestly, the paramedics are not God, but I thought, I thought that they were gonna bring her out. They were either gonna revive her or bring her out on the stretcher and take her to the to the emergency. The guy came out and told me, he, you know, he said, are you the husband and, and my daughter? Because by then, someone, the police officer had come, for what I don't know. The police officer was there and, and, and someone else was there. Oh, one of my friends, one of my daughter's co-workers had come over and, and then he when he told me everybody dies, 
and it was her time to go, that was it. I completely lost it. And all I could say is, that's all I had. And that's the truth. I, from then, I was at a loss. Thank God for his amazing grace that the, 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 the worship team sang today. Because I'm only standing before, before you. This is only 268 days that Linda passed. And I'm only standing here by the grace of Almighty God. This is my first uh, ministry trip out since, since then. And I'm, I'm, it's just the grace of God that has me standing. Because, I, I mean, I've been left at a total, total loss. I remember the first, um, first set of laundry I did after Linda passed. I did not even know what to do. Because Linda would sit down and fold those things like if she was working at Walmart or whoever. She would fold those things and pack them away. I think I just left them in the, the thing. Uh, I, I'm, I'll, I'll tell you something now that, I'll tell you something, and I'm not dirty, but I'll tell you something. The same, the same sheet set that Linda slept on on the 29th of December is still on the bed. But wait, wait, wait. What I do? She has the others folded up so neatly and in the closet. So what I do is I take them off, wash them, and put them right back on. <laughs> So I'll go home, I'll take, take that sheet set off, wash it, and put it right back on. Anybody come that, was, that had visited our home in December and visit our home now would say, wait, y'all only have one, one, seat, one set of sheets. But I, I really miss her. I really miss her. I really miss her. Up, up to this morning, I was wondering, did my time match? You know, I... I it is my color right? She was my every, every thing. But, and I know that she would not have wanted me to, to stop. She would want me to go on. I read, the last time that she was here, she spoke about going on to a full reward. Yeah. And if, if, I, if I slack off now, I might get a partial reward. A partial reward. So I'm going to press in and, 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 you know, I only have a few more years left. I only have a few more years left. I might be around here for 20 more years, which would be great. My grandmother lived to be 95, so, so 20 years from now, I'll be 94. So if I get one less than my grandmother, okay. And, and, and um, so... For the, if the devil think that he's going to slow me down, he could forget it. He could as well forget it. <laughs> he, 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 he afflicted my wife because sickness is not from God. I, I, no way. He afflicted my wife and, and, and somehow... She succumbed to it, but to God be the glory. And, and I'm just going to press on in and, and do the will of God and do my best to get my full reward. And now I have an added incentive. An added incentive. I'm in no hurry. I'm not in, in no hurry. I, I, I think that I have a lot to do. You know, and then I'm wearing her ring. You know, people say that's crazy. Well, I'll, I'll have a crazy little finger. <laughs> but but I, I, I bought that ring in South Africa. I went to South Africa and I brought, bought that set right there, the two of those. And the ones we had when we got married, they somewhere at the house. And I went to South Africa and I liked that and I bought it. And when she passed, I said, I'm going to wear it. I'm going to wear it. I, and I, I 
I was about to say something, but I better not say that. Because I never know what God will do. But anyhow, we, we want to get into the word of God today. And I'm, I don't intend to be before you too long. Like my regular 50 minutes or whatever. <laughs> so I'm going to ask the, the team back there to put up the scripture first. Um, let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you. Thanks for your grace, oh God. The grace that you have placed so far upon this service, your blessing, your anointing. Thanks for the wonderful worship that went forth, oh God. And now as we look into your truth, we pray that you'll just bless your word to our hearts, encourage us, strengthen us, admonish us, oh God. Set us apart, my Father, anew this day as your servants to fulfill your purpose. We will give you glory and thanks. Hide us behind the cross. We are not here to be seen, O oh God. Let Jesus be seen in all his glory and majesty. God, we will praise you for his sake. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask that we put up the scripture, Exodus chapter 1 and verse 21. I want to share a few things with that as our base scripture. And and um get out of the way because we have to be back at 5.30. And also we have to go to the restaurant. <laughs> and it came to pass because the midwives feared God that he made them houses. And it came to pass because the midwives feared God that he made them houses. I, I want to talk today about being placed in a strategic position for God's purpose. Or strategically placed for God's purpose. When the Lord made a promise to Abraham that his seed after him would inherit a land and they will become a great nation, he also told him that before that come to pass or come about, they'll, they'll be in a land, they'll be afflicted for 400 years They'll suffer under those people and then they'll come out and they'll come out with a great deliverance. The 400 years pass and a man by the name of Pharaoh ascended to the leadership of that nation, Egypt. But he did not know anything about God's covenant with Abraham. Amen. So when it came time for God to fulfill his covenant with Abraham, Pharaoh stepped in and he wanted to hinder it. So here is Abraham's seed that God promised him having become a a great nation and, and they continue to multiply and as they continue to multiply Pharaoh set up a decree and he told the midwives that every male that is born to this group of people Abraham said he didn't know that Every male should be destroyed. Save the, save the females, but destroy the males. But God had in place 
midwives that feared him. God, oh, God does not leave himself without a witness. God will always place someone right in the midst of everything. God will always place someone there to be his mouthpiece, yes. to be his light in the midst of all the darkness, yes. in the midst of all the perversion, yes. in the midst of all the, the confusion, God will always have a person yeah. or a people yeah. that he will place right in the midst of that to keep his name and his purpose yes. going forth. So he he had these midwives strategically placed to fulfill his purpose. I want to say this. You and I have been placed right where we are. Right where we are. As Esther said, we have come to the kingdom of for such a time as this. Yeah. We have been placed where we are, on that job, in that community, in that family, wherever we are, we have been strategically placed there by Almighty God himself yeah. for his purpose. Yeah. And, and it's high time that, that we arise yes. and, and take a stand yes. for righteousness and holiness yes. and be the mouthpiece that God has called us or raised us up to be. Amen. And mark you, it is not, you're not placed where you are for you. Because no. so many times we think, well, what is, it, what is in it for me? And if I cannot figure out that there's something in it for me, I don't want any part of it. But mark you, every child of God is a servant first. Because yes. we, we, we claim that we are doing what? Serving the Lord. Yeah. So we are servants and, and if we are servants, we are here to serve not only the Lord, but to serve others. Amen. And, and, and these two midwives, and I'm, I, I'm, I have some notes, but I, I realize I, somehow I can't stick with them. <laughs> these two midwives were placed as servants of God. Pharaoh thought they were his servants. But they were servants of God. And because they were servants of God, they were willing to put their lives on the line. If Pharaoh had any inclination that they were saving the, the, the male babies alive, Pharaoh would have killed them. He was bloodthirsty. And they put their lives on the line. How many of us today are willing to put our lives on the line on. for the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ? On, and to serve others. To allow him to work through us. To establish his purpose. Yes. That's, why, that's what they were doing. They were establishing the purpose of God by saving those babies. Yes, yes. And when, when people do not understand or people do not know where God has brought you from, Come on. they try to, to, to hinder your progress yeah. or they become jealous of you. Yes. This was, these children that Pharaoh wanted kill were not so much they, um, just, they were not just little Hebrew children. They were Abraham's children. Yeah. And God had a covenant with Abraham. Yeah. 
And that, that's the thing. God had a covenant with Abraham. And I want you to know that God has made a covenant with you through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God will stand with you when people are trying to destroy you, when people are trying to work against you, when people are trying to curtail you and hinder you. God will work for you. Yes, he will. Because he has made a covenant with you. And our God is a covenant-keeping God. Amen. You have been, as I said before, you have been placed strategically by God. And God wants to flow in you. And God wants to flow through you to accomplish something right in the midst of all this garbage that is going on in 2023. Look, Shua, or sorry, Shifra and Pua, they feared God more than the wrath of, of, of Pharaoh. And they were willing to disobey, disobey Pharaoh's order. The, the, the problem with the church today is that we fear people more than we fear God. Amen. We fear a system more than we fear God. Yes. And that's why we are quote unquote, losing it. Yeah. That's why the church is struggling. Well, I shouldn't say the church because the real church is advancing, but people around the church who are not truly, truly committed, they're struggling. Yeah. Because they fear the system, they fear other people, they fear what this one thinks and what that one thinks. You know, I, 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 I went over to a brother last night and I was telling him, I was telling him that something had come into my mind and I, and, and I wanted to put it on Facebook and I had forgotten it. And, and right there, I start stirring up in my mind, I think. And then when I got back to the, to the, the beautiful little cabin, I, I, it came back to me and I put it on Facebook. What others think of you does not really matter. Amen. So be real, be honest, yes. because God knows who you are. So you don't have to try to impress people and, and, and all that stuff. Just, just be real. Yeah. Just, and, oh, and another thing I had in this, wake up. Wake up, be real, be honest. Because God knows who you are. And God knows, God knew who, who shifferer and poor were. And he had them placed right there. And look, I am not going to let Shifra and Pua, who have no Holy Ghost, stand against me in judgment. Because in their hour, they stood. And in my hour, I fainted. I'm not going to let that happen. And I'm here to encourage you this morning not to allow that to happen either. Yeah. Because we need to stand up like never before yeah. for the glory of Almighty God yeah. and for the purpose of the Lord Jesus Christ. God has placed you right where you are for his glory. We will be tested yeah. as to whether we will honor him because we fear him or whether we will take the easy and popular way out. God protected these two servants. God will protect you likewise. If you take your stand. I, 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 I should have asked the, 
the, um, the operators to put up Acts 4, 19, and also 29. See, the, the, the early church. Oh, these glasses don't work. <laughs> they work on this paper, but they don't work there. <laughs> but Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. The, the verse 29 now. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Yes. See, we have to come to that place where we say to those people around us and to this system, we are going to obey God rather than man. Yes. And then that's putting, your, that's putting your whole trust, confidence, and life in God's hand. Amen. And then you turn to God and you say, God, you see what I just said? You see what I said to the system? Well, no, God, you give me the courage. You give me the boldness. Yes. You give me the protection to stand. Yes. And God will indeed do that. Yes. And he's, and, and he's looking, God has so much writing on you. As I said, I, I said this one time, that God has made an investment in you. Yes, he has. I don't know if I said it here. And he's looking for dividends. Come on, man. Amen. I don't have any investments anywhere. Only up in heaven, what treasure I've laid up up there. I don't have any earthly investments. All my investments are laid up in, 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 in heaven. But, but I guess you people who have investments, you don't want to invest. And then, but at the end of the year or at the end of the quarter or whenever you get your, your, your um, dividends, that you go there and they tell you, we didn't make any money this time. You, you, you're going to look into, to move your money from there and put it someplace else. Yeah. Yeah. And God, God has invested in you. Come on. That's good. He's invested in me. Yeah. And when he comes by, he looks for dividends. Yeah. He looks for increase. Yes. And we, we, we just cannot, we cannot allow these Old Testament saints to outdo us. Come on. I, I, we just cannot allow that. And then, we, then we, we claim to be so filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, let me go into the black church now. We claim to be Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, have Jesus on our mind, and we are running for our lives. But sins like Shifra and poor are outdoing us. Something is wrong, as the young people say. Something is wrong with that picture. Yeah. God is looking for you. I want you to, when you leave here, when you go to work tomorrow, or if you happen to be one of us seniors and you're retired, wherever you go, if you go to hit those golf balls, and make sure you hit the ball. Don't be hitting behind the ball. You know, you heard the one about the people, the, the two guys who went playing golf, and they, they, one guy keep hitting the ball and turned up an ant's nest. And one ant said to the other one, we better get on the ball. Because <laughs> that was the only safe place. Now, I didn't originate that. Some preacher said that. Hear me. <laughs> but God, God, is, God is looking 
God is looking for us to, to, to perform um, for his glory and for his honor. So let me, let me hurry up here and come to an end. I think I, um, I don't, I don't like all these notes. I miss a page. We, we, need, we, we need to get back to fearing God. The fear of God in our, in our house builds up or builds it up or establishes it. Let's, let's keep the fear of God in our lives more than the fear of man. Amen. Too many of us fear man. Poor and, and Shifra, they did not fear Pharaoh. Right. And because they feared God, God honored them because they feared God God honored them now now I'm no scholar but the scholars claim that that God that both of these ladies then turned around and married into the Hebrew family and just like Rahab who was before them and you know, we find Rahab in the lineage of Jesus. We don't know. You may be a, 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 a descendant of poor this morning. Or Shifra. I don't know. I don't know. But that's the way God works. So I, I want to I wanna shift a little bit and show you two guys. First of all, Joseph, and we know, we know the story of Joseph very, very well. So I'm not, I don't have to dwell on it for a long while. But Joseph was placed in a strategic position to carry on the, the, the covenant that God made with Abraham. And when Potiphar's wife tried to cause him to step outside of that covenant, Joseph said, no. I'm not going to do this craziness. He called it wickedness. I call it wretchedness. And, and sin against God. And you know, it'd be real, real great if we in 2023 look at sin of any sort yes. in that light. Yes. Not just adultery or sexual immorality, but sin on a whole. Yes. If you look at sin as not offending my brother or my sister or my wife or my husband, but if you look at sin as something that offends Almighty God, Almighty God, Joseph said, I cannot, I just cannot sin and do some, something that is going to be hurtful to God. Amen. To God. To the covenant that God has made with me. And we born again Christians need to come to that place. Amen. So Joseph was strategically placed. So, so when the time did come, God blessed Joseph. And God gave Joseph a double portion. Yes, he, he gave him two tribes. Yes. Judah, Simeon, Zebulun, Issachar, um, Levi, Dan. All of them had one tribe. Joseph had two tribes. Why? Because he stood. And God used him. So now in the end, his, he, he said to his brothers... That that you meant for evil, God has taken and shifted around for good. Not just because he could have shifted it around, but he shifted it around because of the covenant he had with Abraham Amen. to save this nation alive. So it's not about you. When you, when, when you meet 
meet someone and, and, and you'll be a blessing to them. When you witness to someone, when you give to someone, yes. it's not about you. No. You do not know who that person is. And you do not know what covenant God has made with their family before them. Because whatever God has said and God has purpose will be established. It cannot be defeated. Amen. Just cannot be defeated. And the thing about it is that little poor you, little poor me have now come on the scene and we, we, we can be a part of this great covenant that God has made with someone else. Glory to God. That blesses me. That blesses me. The fact, that even the fact that I'm here speaking to you, I don't know who all is in this congregation. I don't know what God, what covenant God made with someone back in your four, uh, your four parents, your lineage. I don't know if, you know, if some family member of yours was fasting and praying that, that they seed after them would serve God. Yeah. And, now I'm, and now I have the honor of ministering to you to fulfill that purpose, that, that covenant that God made with that seed yeah. 10 generations back. That's an honor. Pastor Jerry has the honor Sunday after Sunday, week after week of ministering to you. But he could be fulfilling a covenant that God made with your four parents. That's a blessing. Amen. That's a blessing. And I rejoice to be able to do that. To be a part, to be just to do my two cents worth, as it were. God is good. And, and then at the end of all of this, there's eternal life. Yeah. Amen. At the end of it all. Yeah. Can, can, you know, Being away from the presence of sin is priceless. Think of it. Being in a place where there is no sin, no unrighteousness, no backbiting, no backstabbing, yeah. none of that stuff. And, and added to that, not only the absence of sin, but the presence of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Man, I can hear some old preacher saying, good God Almighty. Yeah. That is priceless. Priceless. Forget, forget all the other stuff that's going to be there. Linda and Abraham and Moses and, and Elijah and Elisha and all that. That's all good. But the presence, the physical presence yeah. of Jesus. Yeah. And Pastor Jerry, it matters not that we have no here. <laughs> but, but, you know, when, when he rub his hand up top of my marble and say, well done, sonny. <laughs> Good God Almighty. Yeah. That's a blessing. Amen. That's a blessing. Amen. That's priceless. You cannot put a price on that. Amen. What price? What value? What value are you going to put upon being away from sin and in the physical presence of the Lord Jesus Christ for all eternity? What price are we going to put on that? Then you have, then I don't want to get too too hard on you. Let me put it, use a little word. But then you have people come into church and don't want to do it right.
people have this honor, this privilege. The people in, in, in Muslim and, and Hindu and whatever other countries that they'd be glad just to hear someone tell them the truth about yes. Jesus yes. Christ. And, and, and we come Sunday after Sunday and, and some other time during the week and we, we can read it on our Bibles, we can hear it on, on, on our phones and, and whatnot, and we are not taking full advantage of it. Wow. And then there was a man by the name of Eli, and I, I'm going to close with him. I shouldn't say use the word close. Because every time I, every, this is so fresh. My daughter was like eight years old. And I, I, I said in the message in closing, then I went on and I said in closing, and when I when I did in the car or when we got home, that little thing looked at me and said, Daddy, why why do you say in closing, in closing, why do you just go ahead and close? <laughs> But there was a man by the name of Eli. And, and God made a covenant with him. God said to him, if you do right, if you do right, I will establish your house forever. I want you to, to circle that word in your mind, forever. Because when I, to me, forever means Forever. And especially when it comes from God. Yeah. And don't tell me anything about the translators did this and that and that and they use a the wrong word. I don't want to hear that. I'm ready to do like the Pittsburgh running back. I know some of you want to go home and watch Pittsburgh. The Pittsburgh running back. I'm ready to give him a stiff arm and try to get into the end zone. Don't tell me anything about the translators did this and the translators did that. No. When God says forever, he means forever. Amen. And God said, if you do right, I will establish your house forever. And Eli loved his children more than he loved God. Yeah. And the covenant that God made with him and he allowed his sons to do all sorts of trash. And in one day, let's cut up some. In one day, his two sons died. And when they came and they told him that the, the sons died, it was like in his heart, he said, we say, yeah, they finally reached, they finally got punished. I won't punish them, but God fix them. But then they said to him, and the Ark of the Covenant, the symbol of the presence of Almighty God amongst us, was taken. And Eli, 98 years old, fell backwards and broke his neck, and he died. And I can tell you now, Take this for what it's worth. There is none of Eli's seed amongst us today. And, and God said to him that he was going to have them as priests forever. Forever. And none of them is among us today. I want to encourage you to be true to the covenant that God has made with you through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because your seed after you depends on it. Amen. Your seed after you. And those things that God promised you, God will indeed fulfill. And he will establish them. 
Think of all the thousands of years that passed since God made that covenant with Abraham and it is still in vogue now. And God is still standing with, with Abraham's seed. He might punish them for some of their wretchedness, but there's a core that is always there that God is dealing with. And that God stands by. So God bless you today. Remember this. Because these women feared God. God bless them. Don't let them rise up in judgment against you. The Bible says that I has not seen, neither ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Amen. So let's do like David. You know, when David was down, it was said of him when, when his son revolted against him and, and set up himself as king and, and all that. David maintained his integrity and his trust in God and in the cause of God. And he expected God to lift him up. And I'm reading Psalm, verse, Psalm 3 verse 3. David shouted to God, he said, But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. Yes. David was determined to praise God and to look only to him in the midst of everything. So God has placed you right where you are. All things work together for good. I know we hear that time and time again and we write it out. But you know something? If all things are since all things work together for good, I'm looking to God for better. If God, if God could have blessed these two women way back then, in the manner he blessed them. I am born again. Spirit filled. I have the Holy Ghost dwelling within me. There are blessings untold. Blessings I cannot imagine. That are out there for me. I'm going to say me and tumble for all of us also. Yeah. Every born again believer. Yeah. Let's tap into them. And the thing about it is that I do not have to make waves for myself. All I have to do is to obey God and God will make waves for me. Amen. God will give me the wisdom. He'll give me the understanding. He'll give me the knowledge. He'll give me the, his enabling grace to go forward and be successful because it is God that has placed me where I am. I didn't, I didn't ask to be saved. You didn't ask to be saved. God chose you to be saved. And he chose you for his own purpose, his own delight. His own glory. Yeah. Let's purpose in our hearts today that come what may in regards to who we have to face, we are going to fulfill God's purpose. Let's make a new commitment today. Let's make a new commitment today. God, you have placed me. You have strategically placed me 
where I am for your purpose. And I am going to submit myself to you and allow you to flow through me. You know, I can, I can go on, I can talk about Balaam. He was placed by Almighty God for a purpose, and he tried to, he tried to enrich himself, and it backfired on him. It backfired on him, and when he went to receive the, the, the wages of unrighteousness, he got killed. He got killed. He lost his life. Let's stay in our lanes, as it were. Where God has placed us. And let God flow in us and flow through us and use us for his glory and his honor. Because you are not, right, you are not where you are because you just wanted to be there. You are there because God placed you there. I love you all today. God bless you, Pastor. Would you stand with us? The altars are open at this point. If you want to come up and recommit and say, Lord, what's your purpose for me? Help me to fulfill it. Amen. I'll have to confess and close to 60 years reading the Bible I never paid any attention to those two midwives and look what God did through them and then it says and then God established their households amen maybe you just want to pray for your family but let's spend some time worshiping him Come on, 
All that I 